that we continue to have storytelling moon. I know in our traditional ways, this the cold moons was the time when we would come together in our Nishquito and we would have storytelling. It's the, the time for telling stories. Uh, the story I'm going to tell is a story of a time here when we didn't have any sun. Or Nippowas. Can you all say Nippowas? Nippowas. Okay, many, many moons ago, there was no sun here. There was no light at all, and all the creatures walked around in darkness. And this was before the time of humans. And somehow the creatures all managed to gather together. And I mean, it took a long time to gather together because it was dark and everyone was bumping into everyone and people were stubbing their toes and life was really tough. And when they gathered, they said, what can we do? We cannot continue to live like this in this darkness. It is too tough. And who's climbing over me anyway? Well, the creatures said, we need some light. And Turtle says, you know, I'm one of the oldest creatures here. And I remember a time when there actually was light. But someone came and stole it from us and brought it all the way to the other side of the world. Well, T Turtle says that he's the one who told them about light. But who knows? No one really knew because it was dark. But Turtle insists he was the one. Well, they needed someone to go all the way to the other side of the earth and get some light. And I know traveling just to Africa, not even all the way on the other side of the earth, it is a long flight. But back then they didn't even have airplanes, so it was going to be a long, long journey. Well, who was going to be the one? Who was going to be the hero to save all the creatures and bring light in? I'll tell you who was going to be the one. The fox. The fox had dreamed about being a superhero since he very first watched Superman on his big screen TV. <laughs> and he just knew he was going to be the one. He was going to be. And you know, there's always the one, right? It can never be like a group of people. Well, except for Lord of the Rings. It's like the world is coming to the end, but there's one man who can stop it, right? The new movie with Denzel Washington, Eli, or whatever right now. Yes, you know, one man who can stop it. And we all know that if the world was really coming to an end and we needed some, that one person to stop it, we'd be a woman, because guys aren't efficient, you know? <laughs> if you want something done, you go to a woman, you don't go to a man, you know? <laughs> and all the guys are like, this dude, we're going to get him. <laughs> he's, just, he's just saying that because his wife's in the back row. <laughs> no, you, so the fox is going to be the one. So he started off on his journey, and it took him a while, but he was faster than the other creatures, even in the darkness, because he had a great sense of smell. But he came to a great big obstacle in his way. And what do you think that obstacle was? You know what was in his way? If we started running right now and we are trying to get to the other side of the earth, what would be in our way? No guesses, you're kind of young. Exactly, she knew. See, ask a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the sea keeps on the ocean is in his way. And he couldn't swim that whole distance, but you know what he did? Foxes are pretty smart, and that's how they get the saying, the sly fox. He felt around until he found a nice sharp rock, and he felt around until he found a nice big tree, and he began to chip away at that tree until it started to fall over. He could feel it falling, and he thought, oh, no. What if someone's out there and they don't know this tree has fallen? They might get squashed. And he thought as fast as he could. And he said, Timber! <laughs> and he didn't know why he yelled out Timber, but you know what? No one got hurt. And to this day, when people cut down trees, they yell out Timber! Just to make sure that everyone knows the tree's falling. Well, the fox is kind of angry because he invented that and he didn't get any credit. <laughs> well... Once he had the tree down, he began to chip away on the inside of it and a little bit on the outside of it until he made a machine or a canoe. And he had a bow and he made himself a nice paddle. It looked, at least he thought it looked nice. He couldn't really see it. And it did the job. And there he went and he was paddling across Kita on the ocean. And he was excited. But after a while, his arm started to hurt and he was kind of bored and he thought, man. If only I brought my Nintendo DS with me, I could have been playing on the brakes, but oh, didn't think this through. Then he was out in Keton and he began to think about things and this and that, and he began to hum to himself. And after a while, he started to make up a song, and he thought, wow, I'm really onto something here. And the song sounded like this. 
Chamash, 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 come ashore, my nani no ki music. We can time way, we can time way, cut it up, and not quamor. And to this day, people still sing that song because, you know, that fox brought it back to all the other animals and it was like number one on the charts for a while. <laughs> and they were all, they all had it on their iPods. They said, <laughs> it was jamming, right? And they changed it to different languages. And it's popular, and I'm sure you all know it. Can the kids sing it with me? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Wow, don't let the fox hear you sing that because he's very bitter about that because he doesn't get any royalties for it. No credit at all. So, never sing that in front of fox. Well, there he was, Jamash, 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 coming soon across Keaton on the ocean. And finally, he reached land on the other side of the world and he jumped out of his machine, he dragged it ashore, and he began to run because he could see light. He knew he was going the right way, and when he reached Nipplewurst, the sun, he ripped off a little piece and he didn't have any pockets. As a matter of fact, he was naked. <laughs> Man, he needed to shave those legs. <laughs> wow. He stuck that little piece of the sun in his mouth and he began his journey back. He jumped in his canoe and he began to paddle and he couldn't sing, so he was hungry. <laughs> And after a while, his mouth started to get really hot until all of a sudden he had to spit nipples up, up in the air and down into Keaton, the ocean, and it went out. And he stuck his mouth in there and it felt really bad and he returned to all the other animals. And when he tried to tell them that yes, nipple was, was real and it was on the other side of the earth and they could bow his canoe, it sounded funny like, yeah, he <laughs> so he couldn't talk good, his mouth was all burnt. Well, after a while, he was able to tell them that message. And the next one to go was the possum. Now, we all know what a possum looks like, right? Pretty much, at least the adults do. Well, back a long time ago, possum looked a little different because she had the most beautiful tail any creature had ever seen. It was a gorgeous long tail, big flowing tail. And it was just beautiful. Although she didn't know it at the time, but there she was, she got in the canoe, she paddled across, she found Nippowitz to the light, and that's when she saw this magnificent tail, and it was gorgeous, and she wrapped it around her neck, and she loved it, and she couldn't wait to show all the other creatures. Plus, she was going to be the hero, because she had Nippowitz. Well, she ripped off the little piece of Nippowitz, and she wrapped it nice and soft, and her beautiful tail jumped in her canoe and she began to paddle back but as we know that sun was hot and it began to burn her tail until she flipped it up in the air and it went out in Keton and she returned with no sun. Well, one after another different animals went and one after another different animals failed until finally they didn't think they had a hope in the world. And that's when they heard this little teeny voice said, I like a try. I don't have the best little voice, but it sounded something like that. You do one, right? You do one. I'd like to try. I'd like to try. Yeah, even better. And they said, who is that? And she said, it's me and the spider. And they said, spider, you can't go. You're too little. If the bigger creatures couldn't do it, how could you? And she said, well, how do you know I'm little? It's dark. You can't see it. And they said, well, you sound little. And she said, yeah, I am pretty little. But I'm going anyway. And they said, well, you can't use the boat. And she said, that's OK. I don't need to. And you know what she did? She made like a parachute with her silk. And she floated across the ocean. She came all the way to the other side of the earth. And she ripped off the littlest teeny piece of Keaton the sun. And she wrapped it up in her silk. And there she was, like Spider-Man before Spider-Man was around, floating across the ocean. Well, after a while, Nipple was starting to burn through that soap, but do you know what she did? What do you think she did in the hat there? What do you think she did when Nipple, when nipple was starting to burn through her soap? Through her web. That's right, she just spin more soap around that sun, more web around that sun, and she brought it all the way back to the creatures. Wow, the deer, the male deer, of course, was the first one to see the light coming. And he was kind of scared. He was so scared that he began to run as fast as he could. 
slammed right into a tree. Oh. And when he came off of that tree, he was a little woozy. And he had two branches stuck on the top of his head. <laughs> and he was embarrassed at first that he was such a coward. But then he looked at all the doe, all the female deer. And they were looking at him like he looked pretty good. <laughs> like he was a ham sandwich or something. They thought he was pretty cute with those branches on his head. And you know what? To this day, male deer grow antlers. Because the girls think they look pretty cool with them. And once they get a girlfriend, they shut them off. They don't need those things anymore. But when they break up, they grow some new ones. Wow. <laughs> the poor possum, she looked down at her tail and it now was all pink and long and there was no fur on it and it looked horrible. And she was so embarrassed that she would roll over and play dead. And to this day, if you see a possum and she thinks you're looking at her tail, she'll roll over and play dead because she's so embarrassed. She swears her tail was beautiful, but no one really believes her. Well, there was the fox. And poor fox, his mouth was burnt and it was black as could be from where he carried Nippowus in his mouth. And to this day, if you see any fox, their mouth is black around, you know, because of the first one who carried Nippowus back. So, so there the creatures were, and they had the sun, and they were excited, and, and when it was cold, they'd go over and they'd warm up their hands. And someone brought marshmallows, so they roasted marshmallows, and they were having a good old time. But when they walked too far away, it was dark again. And someone came up with an idea, and they said, if we could get this way up in the sky, up in Sky World, there would be light for everybody. But who could do that? The spider couldn't, the wind didn't blow straight up, so the spider couldn't bring it straight up. Well, that's when the vulture came. And the vulture looked a little bit different a long time ago. The vulture used to have a full head of feathers. And he decided he would put that sun up on his head and he would fly it all the way into Sky World. And he, the vulture's a big bird. Well, unfortunately for vulture, just like unfortunately for many of us men here today, and some, well, I see one over here, my volunteer. There's always one. We start out with a full head of feathers. <laughs> but by the end of life, we may not have them. Well, that was the vulture, because he put nipple whist up on his head. And if you wore hats and, you know, too much nipple whist will do that to us. And he began to flap his wings until he flew very high up into the sky. And all of a sudden, his head started to burn really bad. But he knew he had to make it up there. And he did. And when he got to Sky World, he plopped that sun up into Sky World. And he came back down. And he stuck his head in the cold water. And then he looked at his reflection in the water. And there was a bald head. And ooh. He thought, I look pretty rugged with this bald head. <laughs> well, he didn't like that rugged look. It wasn't like the deer and all the girls thought he was cute. Everybody knew the buzzard was ugly now with his bald head. I thought you were a very handsome man. <laughs> well, <laughs> you still see that buzzard to this day. He flies around Nippowus way, threw it up in the sky, and many people believe he's given thanks. And he wants the animals to remember and give thanks to him for putting Nippowus up in the sky so that everyone may share the light. But what he's really doing is he's up there scouting and looking and hoping that maybe just one feather is still floating around up in the sky and he can stick it in his head. Because the comb over thing really didn't work. Can you Ray? Thanks for watching. This podcast series is presented by Tomaclog Museum. Visit our website at www.tomaclogmuseum.org. Tomaclog Arts programs are sponsored by Amica Insurance. Auto, home, life, Amica. With support from NIFA and the Native Arts Program. The Indigenous Artways podcast is funded in part by the Rhode Island State Council of the Arts. 
Investment in Arts and Culture. Illustrations and production by Jared Swiftcloud Best. Music presented by Eagle and Hawk. www.eagleandhawk.com Support this and other great podcast content at our Patreon page, www.patreon.com forward slash artways.